Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. That time has finally come, I have a chance to try out something from AMD's new Ryzen platform, that being this Acerox Fatality AB350 Gaming K4 motherboard in combination with the Ryzen 7 1700 CPU as you'll see later on. I'm actually glad that I will be checking out a B350 chipset based motherboard model first up close and personal, since it represents a more affordable option over the X370 chipset based models, while still offering overclocking capability, so it will be interesting to see what this model can deliver in that area beside its usual features. All of this is Acerox Fatality branded model, which is more upmarket so to speak, the bundle was still quite modest. You'll get your user manual, quick start guide, optical disc with drivers and software, IO shield and two SATA cables, while you'll also get two M.2 screws, for some reason my sample didn't came with ones. And here we have the motherboard itself. Right away you can recognize that familiar fatality design before all on account of the red and black color scheme and other details which are highlighting for example its passive heatsink around the power design on the top and chipset in the right bottom corner which by the way has and glows with red LEDs. Other details also include the chromed out steel enclosed main PCI Express X16 3.0 slot for bumping up the sturdiness of it and lowering the chance of any signal interference as well as these cool red graphics around the M.2 slots. Speaking of the slots, except the first main one which I've just mentioned, you'll also get another PCI Express X16 3.0 slot with maximal electrical configuration of X4. They do support two-way crossfire multi-GPU setups, but only with Ryzen CPUs and not also with AMD's upcoming A series of APUs. In the case of a Ryzen CPU, you will be able to do dual X16 X4 setups, while in case of an APU, if you plan to use that second X16 slot for an NVMe PCI Express SSD for example, you'll be getting X8 for the first main slot and X2 for the second one. Nvidia's SLI technology is not supported. Beside them we also have 4 PCI Express X1 2.0 slots and 2 M.2 slots, second one sharing its lane with one of the 6 available SATA 3 connections, while the first uses lanes from that second PCI Express X16 slot, receiving that Ultra M.2 standard treatment and 32 gb gigabits of bandwidth. For other connectivity options you'll get one USB 3.0 header next to a 24 pin ATX power connector while his smaller brother the 8 pin EPS one is expectedly situated in the left top corner. Opposite of that on the right side except the CPU fan header you'll find an unusual placement for two RGB headers one of which is the so called AMD LED fan header. They are usually placed on the bottom edge alongside of other headers but nevertheless it's always good to see them being present. Speaking of other headers, you'll get two USB 2.0 ones, COM, front panel, 7.1 HD audio and TPMS headers, alongside of total of four 4-pin PWM fan headers, including that one on the top for the fan CPU, which I've already mentioned. On the left side you will find your usual area for the sound circuitry with PCB shielding and physical separation from the rest of the motherboard for less interference, ELNA audio caps, individual PCB layering for left and right audio channels and Realtakes ALC892 audio codec with support for creative Sound Blaster Cinema 3. That's all well and good but it's a bit disappointing they didn't put something more up to date in terms of the audio codec, like the much better ALC 1150 or even newer ALC 1220. Lastly, on the back, for IO connections and ports you'll get a lot of USB ones, 8 of them in total, 2 USB 2.0 and 6 USB 3.0 ports, one of which is a Type-C one, combo PS2 port, DVI-D, VGA and HDMI video outputs, real takes gigabit LAN and analog audio in and out jacks. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am using a Ryzen 7 CPU, the more value oriented 1700 model, which goes great in combination with this budget friendly motherboard. This model supports a total of 64GB of DDR4 RAM, but I didn't test that out as I've used ADATA's Dazzle 2x8GB kit, which is rated at 2800MHz. All of this model officially supports XMP profiles and speeds greater than this, I couldn't get 
get it working about 2400 megahertz even with the latest bios update no matter what i did lower latencies higher voltages but in the end nothing could make this xmp profile of that ram kit work the RAM support situation should become better with each BIOS update, but if you can, try to double check if the RAM you're buying fully supports this model in terms of matching its XMP profile speed settings and general compatibility. Speaking of the BIOS, underneath your usual layout of main menus and their submenus, we have this cool looking fatality red and black UEFI skin. Except your usual stuff like hardware monitoring and fan settings, boot options, storage options and other common tools. In terms of the overclocking control and fine tuning, under their OC tweaker you won't find not as near number of settings as you would on an X370 chipset based motherboard. You'll get your basic frequency and voltage control alongside of your more detailed RAM settings and voltage configuration of some items and that's basically it. Still in combination with its 9 plus 2 digi power phase design that was enough to reach fully stable 4 GHz at around 1.41 volts. I could also boot at 4.1 GHz but I couldn't get it stable within reasonable voltage for an air CPU cooler. Bottom line this model basically achieved what would any other more expensive X370 chipset based motherboard also managed to do when it comes to overclocking of Ryzen 7. 1700 CPU, as this is pretty much a silicon lottery in question in terms of reaching a certain overclocking frequency maximum. On account of that there is no need to cash out more if you're aiming to get most out of your CPU sample and of course if it fits your needs in terms of other features and general connectivity and expandability. With its price of around $110 it's a pretty compelling product everything considered, but on the other hand the competition for this part of the market share is tough and there is a lot to choose from, so keep that in mind and round up every pro and con. That's it guys for this time from me, thank you for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, that really helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this product, or if you just want to leave your suggestions, and of course feel free to subscribe for content further down the line, or you can check out some of my other videos from before. Until then, catch you later guys!